Jason Maloser is the athletic director, girls basketball coach at Penn's Manor. And our conversation with him brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Jason, good morning. Morning, Todd. How's it going? Good to talk to you again. It's good to see you. The last time I saw you, we were over at Armstrong High School looking forward to playing Bellwood Ennis. That never happened. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. I mean, obviously, uh, on that night, we we knew things were starting to change a little bit, but really expected that we were going to see you two days later for a basketball game, and unfortunately, that never happened. Yeah, well, that's one of the big traditions of uh, coverage of Heritage Conference basketball on U92 is I get to talk to the entire Penn's Manor girls team uh, after their games. And, uh, and I don't know that I'm, I'm the good luck charm for them, but uh, by golly, it's been fun to cover them these last few years. And uh, I went ahead and declared you guys the state champs, if that was okay by you. Oh, of course, Todd. We appreciate it. And, <laughs> you know, we appreciate the coverage you and Mr. Hilliard have given us over the years. And I you know, look forward to getting back to it again this winter. Well, let's talk about that. And uh, let's start first. with You put on your athletic director's hat. We're going to talk fall sports. Um, I know that this is a very challenging time of the year anyway. There are so many different things that have to be handled, schedules and uh, eligibilities and uh, the various things that athletic director has to do. I would imagine it's about 10 times more difficult now than normally it would be, correct? It definitely is, you know, but fortunately, you know, we have great conference leadership with Mr. Rainey and Mr. Worthington. A lot of the other principals are there, and, you know, unfortunately, I have athletic directors that have been around a long time. They're able to help me along the way, too. It's like Colin Stokes and Jim Buckles and Ray Blystone, and, you know, we've been having meetings, it seems like, every week, and, you know, this week it's almost every single day trying to get things in order in place so that, you know, the kids will have an opportunity to have fall sports well, we this think, fall. And, yeah, we, we think about football, uh, and, and football, that becomes the number one thing that we talk about. But there are so many other things that happen uh, on the athletic fields around the Heritage Conference in District 6. So there are many other sports. There's soccer. There's uh, cross-country volleyball has been a particularly troublesome issue because of its indoor nature, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, I mean our meetings, we're, we're starting to develop plans for each individual sport. And yesterday we started, we said, ah, oh, let's, let's start with golf, you know, being outside should be a little bit easier to do. And then an hour and a half later, and we're still on golf and not moving on to any other sports yet. <laughs> we're realizing that, you know, this is going to be a lot of work, but it'll be worth it. And, you know, as you said, with like with volleyball, obviously the limit to 25 indoors will present some challenges. But you know, we're going to try to find ways, and we're fortunate at Penn's Manor, we're going to be able to live stream the games. So, uh, and I know a lot of the other schools in the conference are going to do the same thing as well. So, even if we have to limit whether it's the amount of varsity players that are in the gym at one time or the JV players in the JV game, you know, we'll find ways around that and be able to have volleyball this fall yeah it's kind of interesting to me because of the setup of the schools okay so maybe you do only put your starters who are actually in the lineup on the floor but um, everybody else is standing by either in the auditorium next door out in the lobby or in the cafeteria however you set it up Uh, it's possible to do it uh, but there are a lot of logistical issues that have to be covered and uh, that includes in the locker rooms for sure i mean you know we Obviously, safety is most important, so we have to try to make sure that we have all the protocols in place to ensure safety for the athletes. And you know, as you said, the locker room is going to look a lot different. We're going to have to limit how many people are in there at a time. And for a lot of sports, we're probably going to try to change ahead of time, and then that will limit the amount of time we need to spend in any locker room as well. Yeah, all of those things have to be handled. So volleyball is one thing. The other indoor sport for the fall is water polo. I think the Penn's Matter water polo team probably won't be affected by that, will it? No, I think I think we should be all right there. You know, <laughs> never know. Maybe a few years down the road we'll have to cross that hurdle, but I think we should be all right for this year. Yeah, Penn's Matter, by the way, folks, does not have a water polo team. I don't think there is water polo in any Heritage Conference school. Um, so some of the other issues, uh, scheduling buses. Um, and that becomes an issue. Um, as I, we said, uh, the locker room, what happens with officials on the field? Um, do teams, uh, especially when you're thinking about football, 
Um, some of the schools, like yours, um, there the field house has a facility underneath it at which the players can congregate, but you also can congregate at the school, and, and you have to work all of those things out. For sure. You know, I mean, officials, we're fortunate that we are still having a lot of officials willing to officiate games, and we have had to rearrange some things with volleyball just because, you know, in these times, even to begin with, we were having a shortage of officials, but even now there's some that are opting not to officiate this year. So, you know, we've had to shuffle some things around scheduling-wise, and then, as you said, I mean, each each individual school sort of has come up with their own plan of how we're going to social distance the athletes for our school, but also the other schools coming in to ensure their safety. And, you know, there's always what happens if uh, what happens if there's lightning on a certain night? What are we going to do in that situation? And, you know, there's a lot of different things that we have to factor into all these decisions that, you know, we're fortunate. Like I said, we have that great leadership that coming up with all the different things that might come up throughout the season and hopefully we'll be prepared for it. Well, and one of the other issues and the overriding issue is what happens if a student or somebody involved with the team comes down with coronavirus or is exposed to it. Uh, that throws the schedule uh, into chaos a bit too. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, I, I know, you know there's been different reports around the area of different sports and different different teams being affected by it. And you know, as of now, we haven't had to cancel any games yet. But you know, and hope, we're hopeful that with all the different safety precautions in place, hopefully we can uh, avoid missing any any games, and hopefully we can keep everyone safe and healthy. Coaches of our athletic teams, uh, they have to have their own special training and uh, their special procedures in place. Are you aware of uh, athletes at Penn's Banner who have decided that they're not going to come out because of coronavirus? I have not heard of any athletes at Penn's Manor. I know you know that was one of the discussions with the coach I had with a lot of the girls on the basketball team. You know, I I'm I'm here to help you to to be there for you whatever you need. You know, if, if you decide you don't want to play basketball this year, I completely understand, but you know, and that was our discussion heading down to the fall league. It's like we can have open gyms and just stay in house if you guys want to go to the fall league. You know, I talked to my assistants, and we both decided we were we were all willing to travel down to Johnstown for the league if that was something that the girls wanted to do. And you know, they decided they wanted to play, so we went down there. And I think you know that's a discussion each coach needs to have with their athletes, and just make sure that they feel safe. You know, just like in the learning environment, environment in schools. I mean, our our kids have to feel safe in order for them to learn, and you know, for our athletes to grow not only as athletes but you know, as individuals and to learn those life life lessons, they first have to feel safe. And you know, I feel like for the most part, we're doing a good job of trying to make sure that we're doing everything we can to be prepared for every situation. So your girls did get a chance to play summer ball. I know that's very important to the Penn's Manor program. It's really helped you. Yeah, it definitely has. You know, that's one of the things we talk about every year is trying to find a way to win the off season, and you know that comes with the development of a lot of those younger girls that are going to have to step up this year. You know, we were able to get down to Johnstown and play the East Hills, and we're going to play in Altoona at the Summit this fall. So you know, we're looking forward to having more opportunities along with our open gyms and our speed and agility and lifting workouts that we'll have take place as well. You lost some quality athletes off that basketball team, but you have some quality athletes coming back. I'm sure they appreciate the time to get to play together and maybe assimilate uh, into – a whole new team because every year you you have to do that you have to start out with a whole new ball team uh, and and one of the things as an athletic director that you're looking at right now is um, fall sports transition into winter sports if the governor's um, uh, so-called um, strong suggestion had uh, been in effect uh, that cost you the December portion of your basketball schedule and who's to say it, it won't still uh, then that really truncates that season as well and the winter sports getting underway yeah it definitely does i mean obviously i might not coach a sport in the fall but i'm really rooting for all the sports to be successful and for all the kids to stay healthy because you know we want to make sure that throughout the school year whether it's football or band or cheerleading or as we move into the winter basketball that you know our kids are getting all those opportunities that you know some of those kids missed out on at the end of last year so we got to make sure that we're doing everything we can to 
keep our kids safe and keep everyone in our community safe so that you know, this virus will go away and the governor will allow us, us to continue to play sports. One of the really sad aspects of last uh, spring was the loss of all of those spring sports. Uh, there are athletes in the fall sports, the winter, the spring, who are going to make their case for a college scholarship this season to see them lose those opportunities to showcase their skills to prove that they are worthy of a college scholarship uh, that can have a really devastating impact on a kid's life yeah i mean i truly i couldn't imagine what it would be like to you know miss my senior year in any of my sports so my heart goes out to those kids that missed out on last spring and uh, hopefully there won't be any more groups of kids that have to miss out on any of their sports or activities so you've been involved uh, this week with uh, the school year starting for teachers, at least, and the classes start on Monday. What's it been like around the classrooms at Penn's Manor? You know, we're just trying to make sure that we're prepared for Penn's Manor. We're going to give our students some different options, and a lot of the kids have chosen to come back into the classroom, so we're preparing for that, but we're also preparing for the students that are going to work from home on Google Classroom, so, you know, going through some different trainings to get prepared for both both cases and so we've started to do that and it's nice to be back in the building back to work and you know, as you said a lot of different hats for me so i've been jumping around oh, i know what it's like to be todd for a few days here jumping around between <laughs> getting prepared for my classroom getting prepared for fall sports while also it's you know, trying to sprinkle in a little bit of basketball here and there as well. Yeah, well, I, I do wear a lot of hats, but none of them are elementary teacher, athletic director, basketball coach. Uh, those those are all yours, uh, and, and you can have them. You're specially trained for that. But are there special training uh, techniques that uh, you as a teacher have had to uh, learn as we get toward the start of the school year? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're going to try to do everything we can, as I said, with athletics to keep our – our students safe and we have to do the same thing in the classroom so you know there's definitely going to be some adjustments for all of us as educators but you know we're, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that our kids are safe and they have a successful school year terrific stuff jason malozer thanks for taking some time out of i know is a busy day for you today to spend with us appreciate it no problem todd always good to talk to you have a great day thanks you too there's thanks you too there's